Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here. So a couple of people asked me to talk about this upcoming fight at Super Bantamweight between Niowa Inoue and Stephen Fulton. Stephen Fulton, of course, going to be defending his WBA and WBC titles over in Japan. So yeah, we have a pretty um, unusual, bizarre situation where we have a Al Heyman PBC fighter from America uh, traveling to defend his title. You know, that's something that you don't see very often, but yeah. Let's talk about the fight. So, Niowa Inoue, when he first came on the scene, and when I first started looking into his career and watching him, those of you who spoke to me back then will know, I wasn't overly impressed with Inoue in the early days. I remember thinking at the time, when when Inoue was coming through the ranks, when he was knocking everybody out, and he was looking great, I kind of thought to myself that he was probably a disaster waiting to happen. And what I mean by that is, he had the look to me of one of these guys who is an extremely big, extremely stocky, and extremely strong guy for the weight. And he he obviously had those fast twitch muscles, he was very explosive, very powerful, and he was scoring a lot of impressive knockouts. But I honestly felt that it would get to a stage with Inoue where eventually he would be chin-checked, And when he was chin-checked, I didn't think he'd be able to handle it. I felt it would be a situation where he would kind of fall prey to the curse of the puncher. And what I mean by that is, he gets so used to knocking people out, and so used to intimidating people with his power, that it would get to the point where he would come across somebody who was durable enough, and experienced enough, and had enough stamina to drag him into the later rounds and really put it on him. And I didn't think he'd be able to handle that. And those of you who spoke to me at the time will know, when he ended up in the World Boxing Super Series, which culminated in a fight against uh, Nonito Donaire, who is of course a boxing legend at this point, I half expected him to lose that fight. I actually thought Nonito Donaire had a very, very good chance of beating him. And the reason I felt that is because Donaire, in addition to also being a big puncher, Donaire also had a great chin, Um, Donaire had good stamina, you know, he'd been 12 rounds many times, you know, he had good boxing skills, he was a guy who brought a lot of experience to the table, and I honestly felt like he had a really, really good chance of exposing Niowa Inoue. Well, I was actually pleasantly surprised by the outcome of that fight, because Inoue not only won the fight, but he was able to answer several questions that I had about him going into it. Um, because the fight went 12 rounds, and he had a lot of success early on, was able to win most of the early rounds, and then in the later rounds, the more experienced and more seasoned Donair was able to really put it on him, and Inoue, in addition to his power and his explosiveness, he also showed an incredible chin, he showed very good stamina, and he showed the kind of confidence and the kind of mental toughness that it takes to be a champion. So I was very, very surprised and very, very impressed with what I saw from Niowa Inoue. And ever since then, I've been very, very confident in him. I think Inoue is a very, very good fighter. I think he's proven at world level now, at a much higher level than he was at least. And I think he's definitely one of the better pound-for-pound fighters in the sport. Because he's one of these guys who just brings so much to the table. Not only is he an elite level puncher, you know, one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in boxing, but he's also proven his metal, you know, he's proven he's got a good chin, he's proven he's tough, and he's proven his boxing skills, okay, we've seen in recent fights, like against Paul Butler, who obviously put up a a pretty pitiful effort, but we saw in that fight that, that Inoue is relatively patient, and he can pace himself in a hard 12 round fight if he needs to, you know, he can actually box over the, the course of the distance, so... There's a lot to like about Niowa in a way. He's a guy who's proven now, and I've I've seen enough to know that this guy definitely is one of the best pound for pound fighters in the sport. Now, as far as Stephen Fulton goes, I'll level with you guys. Until very recently, I didn't even know who Stephen Fulton was. I'd never seen a single fight of his. I mean, I'd heard his name be mentioned in um, YTBC videos, but I'd never once watched the guy fight. And when I heard about this fight and I heard about sort of the traction that this fight's getting, it really did intrigue me because 
I didn't really think much of Stephen Fulton. When I heard that this fight was signed, I just thought, okay, it's in Japan. Um, in a way, he's moving up in weight. He's going to get another title. It's, it's just an easy um, walkover job for him. That was honestly what I thought. But I started to see comments all over the place in videos of all these accounts popping up out of nowhere saying that Stephen Fulton's going to win this fight. And I started to notice that a lot of people on the internet, a lot of these accounts seem to think that Stephen Fulton is going to pull off the upset here. And a lot of people seem to think that he's a very, very live underdog. So, I took a, co a closer look at Stephen Fulton. I watched some of his highlights. I, I did some research on him. And, you know, all I saw from Stephen Fulton, I've got to be honest, guys. Like, I've, I've got to tell it like it is. Stephen Fulton looks to me like one of these typical Al Heyman PBC fighters, you know, he, he's just a one of these limp-wristed, feather-fisted black guys who just fights in America against, like, these one-dimensional, flat-footed Mexicans and just runs away and spoils his way to a, a boring points win. <laughs> I mean, the guy's got practically no power to speak of. Um, he's a guy who's easy to put on the ropes. Um, he seems to me to be very, very one-dimensional in the sense that he only he, he only really has one gear, and that's to move around the ring, um, shell up, you know, sort of cover up his face, but get hit in the body, and try and just let you weigh yourself out. And he really, really relies on being the A-side fighter in most cases. You know, he relies on being able to be the slick guy who's fighting at home and who's picking up points from the outside. And uh, is being given probably more credit from the judges and the commentators than he really deserves. You know, that's kind of the... That, that's just the vibe I get from looking at Stephen Fulton, man. He just looks to me like such a basic, limited, um, back foot, limp-wristed slapper. You know, just one of these typical Al Heyman PBC guys. You know, he's similar to the likes of Rashi Warren or Gary Russell. You know, just one of these guys who will just slap for 12 rounds and will just pick up points and knowing that they're at home, they know they're not going to lose on the cards so they can just kind of coast to a victory. Which is really surprising to me because it just goes to show you how much money and how much of a proven box office draw Naioa Inoue is in Japan because very, very rarely, as I mentioned earlier, do these PBC guys who fight under Al Heyman very rarely do these guys ever consider leaving their comfort zone. So it's quite surprising that, that, that that's happening here. So yeah, it's making me wonder a little bit about the politics of this fight because I've seen some people insinuate that um, the politics of it are going to favour in a way. Um, and that would seem to be the case, obviously, since the fight is taking place in Japan. You know, you would assume the home fighter would get the benefit of the doubt with the judges and the referee and whatnot. But I don't think it's as simple as that. You know, I've often talked on here about how location isn't always the most important thing in regards to politics. Because if, if you look at sort of the, the dynamic of this fight, the situation, the champion is Stephen Fulton. And the sanctioning bodies that they're going to be fighting for, the WBA and the WBC, they, they of course both have very close ties to Al Heyman. And it's, it's, of course, again, you guys should know this, if you've been watching boxing longer than five minutes, it's not going to be the Japanese boxing commission that officiates the fight, is it? You know, they're not going to be the ones who appoint the judges and the referee. No, the judges and the referee for the fight are going to be appointed by the sanctioning body. So if the sanctioning bodies in this case have a vested interest in Stephen Fulton winning then anybody who gets any favours in this fight is going to be him. I'm not saying that this is that that's what's going to happen. I'm not saying that they're going to rob Inoue or anything like that. I'm just addressing the um, concerns that a lot of American boxing fans seem to have from the comments that I've seen that Inoue is, the, is somehow the A-side here, you know. As I mentioned before, the reason why the fight's happening in Japan is um, purely because of the economics of the situation. You know, in a way, is the bigger draw. So it, it's more, it makes more financial sense to have the fight in Japan. That's why it's happening there. You know, I don't think that they're going to set 
the champion up in Japan. Like I don't I don't think there's gonna be any funny business there. I think it's most likely that the fight's gonna be fairly officiated. So the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, when I make these predictions for fights, I often like to take into consideration the political situation of the fight as well as the actual fight itself. And I don't think that's going to be an issue here. I don't really think there's going to be any politics on display. And I think we're going to get a real fight, and I think we're going to get a fair fight. And if that's the case, then I think it's pretty obvious that Inoue is going to win this fight, because not only is Inoue the bigger puncher, not only is he the stronger guy, you know, the guy who's more proven at a higher level, But to me, he's also the technically more astute of the two, you know. He's a guy who can fight on the front foot if need be. He can fight on the back foot. He likes to work the body. You know, he can fight from mid-range. You know, he's a a, a decent sort of mid-range hooker. You know, he's a guy who can move around and sort of draw a lead from an opponent. And from what I see from Inoue, he's a guy who seems to be comfortable in a hard 12 round fight, which is what this is likely to be, because Stephen Fulton is just one of these guys who, you know, he's not in there looking to impose himself and force a stoppage, no, Stephen Fulton's a guy who is in there to move away, um, flinch, you know, faint here and there, grab, spoil, and and just try and outlast his opponents and try and score, score points from the outside, you know, so that's how he likes to fight. And um, I think you, in a way, will be comfortable with that. You know, we saw in the fight against Paul Butler. You know, he he tried to stay on the outside all night behind a high guard, and try and um, just wait in a way out, as if he was just waiting for in a way to make a mistake. And in a way, was comfortable with that. You know, just chipping away at him and winning every round comfortably without really forcing it. You know, he didn't really need to force the pace, and he eventually got the job done and and took him out late. And I think that that's likely to happen here. I think Inoue is too strong, too powerful, too quick, um, too athletic, and he's too durable. Um, Stephen Fulton was utterly dominated from what I saw when he fought Brandon Figueroa, who I really don't rate that highly. You know, Figueroa is just one of these, again, one of these Mexicans. You know, he's a tough guy, um, applies a lot of pressure, cuts off the ring. But isn't really that big a puncher, you know, isn't really that explosive. He doesn't really have the same uh, elite level athleticism that Inoue has. You know, Inoue's got the kind of ability that he didn't have. And he was able to completely deconstruct and um, clearly beat um, Stephen Fulton from what I saw. So, yeah, I think Stephen Stephen Fulton to me doesn't really have much of a chance here. I think Inoue's going to break him down. And he's either going to stop him late or Fulton's just going to run and survive and lose a a wide decision. Um, Like I said, I I don't think there'll be any politics. I don't think either guy will get screwed over. I think it's going to be a real fight. You know, I don't think either one of them really has the political clout to make it, you know, to make it some sort of, of controversy. Again, I know the fight's in Japan, but that's only because of the economics of the situation I would compare that to George Cambosos you know getting home advantage against Haney even though the fight was in Australia it wasn't like the judges were on his side because the judges were appointed by the sanctioning bodies which are of course in the Americas you know that's where they're based so yeah there's, there's not going to be any issue there it's just that Inoue is just too good for him so like unless unless Inoue is injured or unless he is just completely overlooking and um, underestimating Fulton. I don't see Fulton as having much of a chance, unless you guys know something that I don't, because I've seen a lot of people picking Fulton, a lot of people think he's going to win, and I just don't see it, man. So yeah, I'm going to go with Inoue, either by a late stoppage or a wide, comprehensive decision. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. God bless.